Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine and today what are we talking about? We're talking about the fastest SSD I have ever tested outside of a RAID configuration and that is the Corsair MP600 Hydro X unit. So previously or rather I've had some previous experience with the MP600 but that was not the pro model. Okay, so this is brand new for me. I think the MP600 offered marginally lower performance than this drive or at least in everyday use cases but yeah this one just takes it to that level where it literally becomes the fastest storage device i have ever come across and what makes it so is the use of 96 layer tlc nand two gigabytes of ddr4 for cache and of course the fison e18 controller now, of course, this configuration is not unique to this drive. In fact, I think a lot of the high-end PCI Express Gen 4 drives that you're gonna come across actually use this controller on the market right now and this sort of configuration or combination of hardware. So that's not necessarily new. However, as with all SSD manufacturers, the tuning in the firmware is where the difference is gonna be in performance, reliability, and so forth. In the case of the MP600 Hydro X, there's something about it that makes it so different from the other SSDs that you find on the market. And that is it uses a water block or rather is meant for water cooling. So I actually have the water cooler right here or rather the heat sink from the drive. So as you can see here, there's an inlet, there's an outlet port of course, and this is basically your blocks for actually cooling the SSD. So why would you wanna cool an SSD? Well. There are several reasons for that, particularly performance. So we all know with PCI Express 3 or even PCI Express Gen 4 drives more so actually, they get very hot, particularly the high performance ones. The number one thing you're going to come across is throttling, right? Thermal throttling so the performance gets lower and lower and lower just to manage temperatures. But more than the throttling of the performance, I think you're risking data as well, data corruption and data loss. So the more heat you can keep away from your SSD or the cooler you can keep it, the longer the lifetime of your SSD and of course the more reliable the data that is on the SSD. And this drive actually caters to both of those things. Right now, the cheapest place that I found this drive for, at least quoted, is actually 11,000 Rand. That's a lot of money to ask for an SSD. Now I understand that it's two terabytes and that's a reasonable amount of storage. However, 11 grand is a lot of money to ask. That said, I am aware of the fact that SSDs or storage in general has actually gone up because of mining and so forth. So this isn't necessarily the normal price, but do not expect this to be a cheap SSD. It is Corsair's most premium SSD or storage offering they have. I think they have something like the NX500, the PCI Express card, but that offers nowhere near the performance and I don't even think it offers anywhere near the terabytes written uh, rating, which this drive actually has at what? 1,400 terabytes written and that translates into 280 years or something like that according to Corsair. So this drive literally is the cream of the crop when it comes to Corsair SSDs. And with that, what are you looking at in terms of performance? You're looking at seven gigabytes a second in sequential reads and writes. That's peak performance. Or rather in writes, you're looking at 6,850. Now, the reason I have to be that specific is because I literally did record the numbers that Corsair puts out as the performance of the drive. So I think at best I recorded in CDM this is, I recorded over like 7,100 megabytes a second in reads and about 6,800 or so in writes. That's megabytes a second. So it's literally in line with what Corsair is claiming about this drive. I mean, that sort of performance is literally at the peak of what the PCI Express Gen 4 connectivity method can achieve, at least with four lanes. But that said as well, you don't only want to be concerned about sequential reads and writes. There are IOPS or rather input output operations per second. And that is also very high on this drive. Now granted, it's at Q-depth levels that general people don't use, but still the long and the short of it is that it's an exceedingly fast drive. Right now, what you will mostly appreciate about this drive is just how cool it runs. Literally, I copied a 100 gigabyte file from the MP510, obviously, to just the MP600 Hydro X. And 
yes, it was a short amount of time spent because the drive is that fast. And mind you, I was doing this under PCI Express 3.0, right? Because motherboard limitations on the Z390 dock I'm using. Anyway, going back to what I was saying, when I copied that 100 gigabyte file from my MP510 to the Hydro X, the maximum temperature I recorded was 22 degrees. Yes, it was a very quick file transfer, but 22 degrees. Okay, that, that speaks a lot to just the power or rather the advantage of having a water-cooled SSD. Now, those are all the cool things and what this drive allows you to do. However, having said that, it does present some challenges. So, you have to be careful about how you're going to build your machine depending on the motherboard. If you have a slightly older motherboard that does not have the M.2 socket above the first PCI Express slot, then you might have issues, okay? Or if you have, like I have on the Z390 dock, I have a situation where the two M.2 sockets are directly beneath the graphics card or rather where I would insert the graphics card on the first PCI Express slot. So that presents a bit of a challenge. How I got around that is to actually install the graphics card on the second PCI Express slot. So you can still get around that by just moving your graphics card to your second PCI Express uh, slot. However, you may be sacrificing performance on your graphics card depending on the graphics card in question or the motherboard in question rather. So yes, having this big thing on top of the heatsink or for the SSD, yeah, it does present some challenges, but not any less or any more challenges than the MP600 Pro would or the regular MP600 either. So that's just true for all SSDs that have their own heatsink on them. Now, is it all of this worth spending 11 grand on or 459 or $459 according to the Corsair website? Well, that's up to you. This is a drive that I genuinely like, but I am very much aware that it costs a fortune and it might present some challenges for some people in terms of installation. And of course, would it be worth setting up an entire water cooling rig just to have a water cool SSD? I don't know, you know, that's something for you to determine. But having said that, I actually did exactly that. I literally rebuilt my entire machine so I could use this as my main drive or rather my secondary drive where I store my information, my important information at least. So did it turn out all right? I think it turns out all right. It turned out okay, you know, um, I like the Hydro X unit and also, hey, this is slightly off topic, but let's talk IQ version 4. Oh my gosh, Corsair has finally done it. Like the missing link for me when it came to the Corsair experience in anything was IQ. I mean, IQ version 3 looked the part. It looked really nice, okay? The dashboard and whatnot, it was really stylistic, but in terms of functionality, ease of use and UX, I just, it was just not up to scratch. In fact, it was the weakest part of the entire ex Corsair experience. So with version 4, oh, wow, they've just really done it. It's exactly what I wanted, you know? Obviously, it can improve here and there, but compared to what they've had before, finally, my prayers have been answered. Point is, IQ literally is probably the biggest issue I had with Corsair Anything, and they literally have sorted that out with version 4. So I am so, I'm literally overjoyed by that because I use IQ every day. Okay, so if I'm able to use it now in a way that makes sense, that is intuitive, and just works so wonderfully well, yeah, I'm all for it. So whoever made IQ version 4, damn, you guys rock. But going back to the MP600 Hydro X, it's an expensive SSD. It's a very fast SSD. It runs cool and it's basically the fastest storage unit you will have in your machine, or at least most likely going to be, unless if you have them in RAID and so forth, and that would be, yeah, that would be really something else. But overall, that's it from me about the Corsair MP600 Hydro X. Should you buy it, should you not buy it? I can't answer that for you, but what I will tell you that it is mighty fast and it runs incredibly cool. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.